The coronavirus outbreak falls into the category of a high-risk event with the impact it is having in countries around the globe. So how do firms prepare for something so wide-ranging? The Wharton School is going to be giving its students and the University of Pennsylvania the opportunity to study this firsthand through a course that will be offered through the remainder of the school year. It is titled Epidemics, Natural Disasters, and Geopolitics, Managing Global Business and Financial Uncertainty. Wharton Management Professor Morrow Gian is spearheading this and he joins us here in studio. Great to see you, Mauro. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Why do you, th- do you think this course is obviously needed at this point? Well, this was uh, a class that uh, was proposed by the dean's office uh, at Wharton just a week ago. They contacted me asking, uh, would you uh, do this again? Because I had launched a similar class uh, 12 years ago in 2008, just after Lehman Brothers. And it's very important for the school to do something like this. First, to be responsive to uh, worldwide events. Second, to offer students uh, a chance of learning about uh, the topic. And that's uh, thirdly, and quite importantly, is also to show uh, the, the breadth of expertise that the Wharton School has. So every, every day of class, uh, we're going to have two different uh, Wharton professors teaching, and they're going to tell us about, from their perspective, uh, how business needs to be prepared and what, what, what's the likely impact of this going to be. So when you think about those areas, what, what are the, the focal points that, that really will be brought up most likely in this, in this course offering? Well, we're going to cover, obviously, the more important, uh, most important topics such as uh, you know, the nature of this pandemic, uh, how far it may be, uh, you know, spreading around the world. We have Zeke Emanuel, uh, whom, if you remember, sure. yeah. on, on our faculty, yeah. but uh, he was instrumental to bringing Obamacare yeah. to life uh, during the uh, those years in the White House. Uh, also, uh, Jeremy Siegel on the markets, uh, with the reaction by the market. So we're going to do all of those topics that, of course, should be in the class. But we're also going to have other topics, such as, for example. Um, the uh, disruption of supply chains. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, telecommuting and teleworking uh, and whether this is going to change. We're going to take a look at crisis management. Uh, we're also going to have uh, presenters on uh, the management of surprise. Uh, so what do you do when you're completely surprised sure. when, when the uh, the rug is uh, you know pulled uh, from underneath your feet? Uh, how do you manage an organization? Uh, under those uh, circumstances? And uh, also quite um, intriguingly, we're also going to cover emotional contagion and actual contagion in an epidemic such as this. So, yeah. as you know, there's a lot of commentary out there uh, as to whether we are panicking or whether the response is appropriate or not. So, Sigal Barsaid, also from our yep. faculty, is going to be telling us about emotional contagion in the context of a public health crisis such as this. Yeah, we just talked with her a couple of days ago about uh, about that aspect as well. This, I, I guess, to a degree, then, uh, you have to consider this a teachable moment uh, when you talk about what you're seeing right now. But I think when you look larger at all of the different types of events that may occur in the course of time, uh, going back to the recession and then obviously 9-11 and all these different elements, they probably all have some some similarities to how you deal with them. Uh, yes, and uh, I, I say this, unfortunately, that it is a teachable moment. I, I would prefer not to be facing sure. uh, you know, these circumstances. I think we all would. Uh, but yes, I mean, we are uh, increasingly or more frequently getting into these sorts of uh, troubles. And uh, they are teachable from the point of view of, uh, well, if uh, they're becoming the new normal, meaning if every two or three years we're going to go into a crisis such as this uh, for one reason or another, then we have uh, to be prepared uh, as a nation, as organizations, and uh, we have to prepare our students. And that's our role as educators, and that's my role as an educator. So I want uh, uh, my students uh, to be able to, um, you know, um, uh, download, so to speak, uh, a frame of mind whenever this happens. Uh, So I want them to acquire those kinds of skills while they are at Wharton. The the interesting part is also it's not just Wharton students that will be able to take part in this. The the entire University of Pennsylvania community would be able to get involved in this, students that are on campus as well. Uh, Correct. So we're admitting uh, as many students as wish to join us. Uh, We're going to have an online component to the class. Uh, We have uh, 450 right now. Uh, and they come from all f- corners of the university. So we have uh, Wharton students, we have non-Wharton students, meaning Penn students, undergraduates, graduates, uh, everybody. Is that mindset, then, as you've talked with your students over even the last decade, is that mindset of, of recognizing that risk is a component that could be out there, is that kind of in their minds as they're going through their time here at school? I, I think it is, but uh, keep in mind that it's not just risk. Risk is when you can calculate the odds when you can uh, you know, quantify right. the probability. Uh, here we're talking about uncertainty, yeah. uh, which is a situation in which you cannot calculate probabilities. 
And unfortunately, and I think uh, we've been thinking along these lines for a long time, even here uh, in some of our interviews, yeah. uncertainty has become the new normal. Um, so uh, for the last uh, 15 years or so, it's one thing after another that generates so much uncertainty. We see that reflected in the markets. We see that reflected in uh, the decisions that people make uh, every day. We see that that consumption is not uh, where, you sh- where it should be. And that's because there's so much uncertainty. When, yeah. when that happens, then consumers don't spend. Uh, so this spells trouble. Uh, but we need to get used to it. Uh, we need to understand that perhaps uncertainty has become the new normal. As you alluded to a couple of moments ago, I think it's interesting in looking at the roster of professors that you've assembled for this, uh, that when you think about this level of uncertainty, it's not just one area that you focus on. There are so many different areas that you can pull from to kind of gather information, gather understanding about how you deal with point X, point Y, point Z in terms of dealing with these situations. Oh, absolutely. We need to understand how investors react, how consumers react, how savers react, but we also want to um, get an understanding as to how employees are supposed to uh, behave in this situation. Not everybody will be able to stay at home and work from home. Uh, So how do we manage a situation in which we're going to have both at least uh, for a while? Uh, So it goes from the very macro all the way to the very micro, right? Uh, and I think it affects every single function within the firm. Is that one of the bigger challenges then for, for companies, do you think, these days, uh, of, of thinking both sides of, of the spectrum here? You obviously have the macro, which are, are very important elements, and in many cases, if you're a publicly traded company, it may be to the bottom line, but even the smallest elements that you have to think about in terms of thinking about your employees and their care and making sure that they are safe in a situation like this. No, absolutely. That's really important. And then the other dimension, of course, is you need to prepare not just for what's coming next week or the week after, but you also need to prepare for the moment in which the economy will recover. And sure. hopefully this pandemic will be behind us. Uh, so it's a very, very uh, difficult balancing act. You need to prepare for the recovery as well. Does that also now, that I would think has to fit in to companies and, and, and executives' long-term thinking, not just in the next, with this case, in the next six to 12 months, but you have to be thinking five to 10 years, that as a component of the overall process. Yes, I think you have to keep your eye on the ball and to keep it uh, over the medium run to long run, meaning, as you just said, five to 10 years, I think it's appropriate. But of course, right now, most companies, most decision makers need to um, you know, uh, make a choice uh, you know, in the next uh, week, in the next uh, 24 hours uh, yeah. for what's going to happen next. So it's a, again, it's a, from a leadership point of view, I think it's a very, very hard, very tough uh, balancing act. And uh, we also want to, um, you know, have that as part of this class. And in fact, uh, Geoff Garrett, our dean, is going to be addressing precisely that issue. One of the things that is also unique to this is that it will not only be, as you alluded to before, a course that will be in classrooms, but it will also be an online component as well. So it gives you both options in this in this instance. No, absolutely, because we have students, remember, that are part-time students, so they're not full-time on campus. So um, most of them will be taking this class uh, online, our executive MBA students. Uh, and there may be other students who uh, might prefer to take it online or they happen to be uh, doing a program abroad or something else. Uh, So, yes, we're offering the option of both in-class and online. How important, then, is to have these types of offerings moving forward in general at universities uh, here at the University of Pennsylvania, at the Wharton School, but in general across the United States, do you think, right now? Well, you mean uh, moving uh, classes Mo- online? Well, and moving forward, just that having this mindset of thinking about uncertainty well, in general. Well, I think we need to become more nimble and more flexible. And we need to have a protocol in place for responding to situations such as this. So, yes, we've had 9-11. We've had the global financial crisis. We've had other epidemics like SARS or MERS. Uh, but this one is uh, striking at the very heart of what we do. And uh, it's a very mysterious illness, and it's already a pandemic. Over 100 countries have uh, reported uh, uh, cases. Uh, so it's, uh, again, it imposes on us, I think, uh, an even greater measure of uh, flexibility in, uh, in order for us to respond effectively as an educational institution. It, it also then, it, it expands just how many people need to think about these particular options. Obviously, the university and the Wharton School are thinking about it. We have, uh, obviously, Washington, D.C. that is thinking about it. Business leaders are thinking about it. A- and the hope is that we will all be able to come together and be able to find the right path to be able to go down this. 
this, you, you, you know, to be able to get the cure and to be able to have the economy recover. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And we want to be prepared for all of that, for, you know, the, the tough weeks ahead and also for the recovery. The, the courses that you'll be offering specifically, let's dig into those for, uh, for a little bit. You talked about the variety of different areas that, that will be touched on, the variety of different uh, university experts that will be brought on here. Go through those if you can for a moment, and, and let's touch on just those different areas. Because I said with the breadth of, of areas that we have to look at in this, there are so many different touch points that would be that will be important here. Yeah, so uh, first and foremost, uh, we want to convey to the students a sense as to the scale and the scope of this pandemic. Uh, and uh, we also want to um, give them a way of thinking about why the markets are responding in the way they are responding, and what is it that companies are doing. Uh, but then we also want to uh, go deeper into the more micro aspects. Uh, like, for example, we're going to have uh, Katie Milkman tell us about uh, what kinds of uh, incentives or nudges can you introduce to elicit the right kind of behavior on the part of everyone involved yeah. so that they don't take unusual risks, uh, so that um, nonetheless they, they get their work done, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, we're also going to be uh, examining how this may change, for example, the uh, relationship between the U.S. and other countries in the world. Yeah. Uh, is this going to have any implications uh, globally for borders? Uh, we're going to have one of our campus experts, uh, Beth uh, Simmons, uh, who is a professor at Wharton as well as at, at the law school and the School of Arts and Sciences, tell us about uh, how this may change the meaning of borders in the world. Uh, remember, in a world that we thought was borderless, yeah, right? Yeah. But borders are coming back. Uh, and uh, we're also going to take a look at, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, emotional contagion. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I think uh, the whole uh, problem of uh, how companies can um, you know, function with uh, many of their employees staying at home is very important. Uh, so telecommuting, telework, virtual teams. And luckily, we have Martin Haas on the faculty of Wharton, and he's going to tell us um, how uh, or to what extent these kinds of arrangements uh, can, uh, can help us. Um, we're also going to have, uh, uh, finally, a session on uh, the law. Uh, and uh, sure. drawing lessons from climate law and how that may be, um, you know, applicable uh, to uh, situations in um, in the wake of a pandemic such as this. For example, the insurance implications. So insurance companies, uh, you know, are going to be yeah. greatly affected by this. Right, a lot of cancellations of events, a lot of cancellations of travel. There's insurance uh, products involved. Uh, so we're also going to take a look at that. In other words, uh, what we're offering here is a 360 degree view from the macro to the micro, and then across different levels, and uh, you know, exploring all of the different ramifications of, uh, uh, of an emergency situation such as this. How much do you think that then this instance of dealing with coronavirus, and obviously it's, it's again, part of, of what we've seen with other occurrences, you know, the, the recession, 9-11 and such, but how much do you think this one, with all of the publicity and all of the conversation about it, maybe does change the mindset of a lot of people on a lot of different aspects uh, of this area of uncertainty. Yeah, it might. Um, it is a simultaneously a demand shock and a supply shock, right? It started as a supply shock in China, you know, factories not working, yep. therefore we're running out of components, but then it be quickly became a demand shock. Then we are in the middle of an election year, so this is going to have consequences of how the campaign is run. I mean, no big <laughs> events, no rallies, no uh, those sorts of things. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, plenty of blame for the politicians to allocate uh, yeah. among themselves as to who's responding well and who isn't. Uh, and then on top of that, I think the other factor that I think is really important that we're also going to cover in this class is the geopolitical aspect of it. So we went into this pandemic uh, two or three months ago. Uh, in a context in which, uh, uh, you know, the United States, uh, Europe, uh, Japan, uh, China, they were all fighting over a, a whole range of issues, primarily yeah. about trade. Um, so uh, that's another concern of mine, that uh, we don't have cooperation now. And I believe that, strongly believe that we need coordinated action on the parts of governments around the world to minimize the impact of this pandemic. And, and I guess then when you look at Europe for a, a couple of seconds where this is concerned, you have obviously what has occurred in, in Italy, but then you have the comments of, of Angela Merkel uh, in Germany about how much this may impact their economy. And, and we still haven't heard a lot from France, from the UK at this point, but I think the expectation is we're going to continue to hear more from a variety of different locations as we move along. No, absolutely, absolutely. And then let's not forget the more tragic aspect of this, uh, so the people who are dying. Yeah. And as you know, it's um, uh, primarily hitting people above a certain age or people with certain uh, pre-existing conditions. 
and our healthcare system, uh, not just here, also in Italy and many other places, is already overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, the, the more tragic side of this story. And we're also going to cover this in the class, of course. Uh, so we should do whatever we can to protect those groups that are more exposed to the virus. There's a lot of people who get the virus and then apparently they get better and, uh, and uh, th there are no major consequences for them. Uh, but there are people who are passing away, yep. unfortunately, as a result of, uh, of this virus. Great seeing you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Maura Guillen uh, here at the Wharton School, Wharton Management Professor. Again, that course that they're going to be offering, Epidemics, Natural Disasters, and Geopolitics, Managing Global Business and Financial Uncertainty.